once you've found your limiting reactant, next you want to calculate the theoretical yield of the product. To do this, you're going to use an ICE chart, where ICE stands for Initial, Change, and N. And the numbers that you plug into the ICE chart are going to be in the unit of moles. So the initial is where we started. On the previous video, we calculated the moles of phosphorus and the moles of chlorine. And so I've repeated those numbers here. And notice, these are the numbers before we divide by the coefficient. So for the chlorine, I'm not using the 0.2351 number anymore. That was just to find the limiting reactant. What I need for the ice chart is how many moles of each chemical I have. And notice, in this case, I'm starting with zero moles of the product. Because I know that chlorine is my limiting reactant, if the reaction goes to completion, at the end, my limiting reactant has to go to zero. So if I started at 1.4104 moles of chlorine, the change is equal and opposite, negative 1.4104. That's the only way I'm going to end up with zero chlorine. The change for the phosphorus will also be a negative number, because the phosphorus is reacting with the chlorine. But the change for phosphorus trichloride will have to be a positive number, because as this reaction uses up phosphorus and uses up chlorine, it's making more and more of the product. To find the number that fits this change row, the key is you have to use the mole-to-mole -mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, which means we're going to be using those coefficients to turn one chemical into another. So, for example, if I want to know how much phosphorus reacts, that's my unknown, I set that equal to 1.4104 moles of chlorine, and the balanced chemical equation is a 6 to 1 ratio. Every time the reaction takes place, it requires 6 moles of chlorine to react with 1 mole of phosphorus. So this gives me an answer of 0.2351 moles of phosphorus that are reacting. So I know that this change is negative 0.2351. I find the end by just subtracting a, the change from the initial. And at the end, the phosphorus will be 0.5721 moles. I'm going to find the change for the phosphorus trichloride exactly the same way. Notice I'm setting it equal to the limiting reactant again. This time the mole to mole ratio is 6 to 4 instead of 6 to 1 and the number that I get 0 0.9403 is the positive change for this product. So the phosphorus trichloride started at zero, the change was positive, so at the end I have 0 0.9403 moles of phosphorus trichloride. This is the number I need to calculate how many grams of phosphorus trichloride, because that was the original question, what's the theoretical yield? So how many grams of phosphorus trichloride would I be making? And I use the molar mass of phosphorus trichloride. One mole of phosphorus trichloride is, from the periodic table, 137.32 grams. And so I get an answer of just over 129 grams. And that is my theoretical yield.